Hello. I'm fine. The best thing to do, call me Aska. My family, they call me Charlie. That is my family name. Why? At birth, my mom gave me the name Jessica Aska. This was my name given to me. When I lost my hearing, I was taken to a deaf school, which was a Catholic missionary school that rejected my birth names as that did not align with Catholicism. So for me to join the school, I had to be baptized. And at that baptism, I got the name Josephine. That is how I got that name, Josephine. This name, Charlie, when my mom was giving birth to me, her father had passed on. And what was his name? His name was Charles. So my mother wanted to give me his name, but she had to change it slightly to sound feminine. The deaf community gave me a sign name. This is my sign name. I'm the sixth born in a family of eight children. Three girls and five boys. Both of my parents have passed on. What I love the most, personally, I love to read books, novels, any interesting book as, a, as my pastime. I also love to watch movies. I love that. I'm also passionate about advocacy on human rights, especially on about women and girls. Yes, I'm deaf. And what's so special about being deaf? You people suffer with all the noise pollution, but my world is silent and peaceful. Also, we the deaf people are not concerned about tribe, where one is from. We are a deaf community and we identify ourselves based on being deaf. We don't care where you come from. Just by being deaf and that you sign, we feel you're part of us. The hearing who also learn sign language are included to be one of us. That is the uniqueness of being deaf. I think we are proud of who we are. The hearing people, they like to talk to feel if someone is ours and they group themselves. It could be based on tribe, family, that's them. How they identify themselves. It could be peer to peer. And for the deaf, we don't have that peer respect, but just being deaf is enough. We feel free with one another, no matter the age. If a deaf child sees me, they will ask if I'm deaf and I'll say yes, and we start communicating. But for the hearing side, they feel the age pairing matters, the tribe, the family. There's a whole list. We don't have that. Just being deaf binds us. I think I began my advocacy when I was in school, a deaf primary school, but I was unaware of it. I will take a stand when the big ones will bully others. I will stand with them, report to their teachers, but I never thought it was within me. When the deaf school was uh, interacted, 
you know how boys can be naughty boys sometimes could be naughty but i was very tough no one touched me in a funny way that i didn't like many times i'll fight back or report i think it started from there also at the age of nine years old i experienced something i was nearly raped almost raped I didn't shout for my father because it was at night and I was sleeping. I also didn't understand, but I think it also began from there. Then I moved to high school. It was a school for the deaf for one year. And then I moved to an integrated school with the hearing. And during the interaction time, I saw during other school visits for debates. I saw during other school, how the boys from other school will behave. I was in the debate club, how they will behave, dance together. I was uncomfortable. I felt it was wrong. Maybe my Catholic primary school upbringing influenced me. I don't know, but I felt it was wrong. Much later on, after school, I joined the Deaf Society. We couldn't, I couldn't access any employment. Why? At that time, the deaf didn't go to high school, but I had a high school certificate. When I was looking for work in the government offices, they would repeatedly ask me, is this certificate truly yours? It made me angry because it was mine. But why the attitude on the basis of my disability that I cannot perform? I started advocating from there for the rights to access all these different things. Then I, get, I got employed at KNAD. When I got work from KNAD, that is when I came to the realization of the truth on how deaf women and girls are really abused out there. At the office, I was assigned as the information officer. I was employed as the coordinator to tell you the truth for Central Rift Valley and Eastern region. But that time my office was not ready. So I was based in the Nairobi office. Many cases came about abuse, many of them, but they didn't comprehend that their rights were violated. They were only advocating for the person who maybe impregnated them to take up the responsibility for the children, not thinking that their rights were violated. That is when I realized we had a lot to do to help rescue deaf women, also justice for those who are survivors of violence, and also to help victims of violence. My time at the KNAD desk office, we had cases of deaf women and hearing men or deaf to deaf, that is a deaf woman and a deaf man. But what really surprised me is that my bosses didn't want me to handle cases that involved deaf men. They felt that it was among the deaf, just leave it. But if it was a hearing man, action on it. I wondered why both are in the wrong a person right has been violated so i felt we needed a platform to voice our rights knad was not the right platform for us so i really started to think hard as to how to solve that problem and that is where i'm able to express myself because i'm also a survivor of gender-based violence i'm a survivor I felt that if I kept silent about my experience, who will solve the other's problems? I can voice, I can advocate for myself, but what about them? For those who cannot, I said I better roll up my sleeves and take up responsibility and start advocating for those who are abused, for those who have gone through what I went through. Also to rescue others, give awareness, give empowerment, so that no one will walk the path which I walked. FADWIN began in the year 2008 and I am the initiator. I wanted to action on the idea that began when I was working with KNAT but I had already resigned. The registration was done in 2008 but unfortunately the following year, I was involved in a very bad road accident that led me to losing my memory. 
That meant that from 2008 to 2011, Fedwin was not active. I thought my other colleagues would take up the task, but they did not. I gradually regained my memory and in 2012, we became active. Fedwin was established to be a platform that will cater to the interest of deaf women focusing more on gender-based violence, sexual reproductive health, economic empowerment, and governance. Those are our key areas of focus, but our specific passion is on human rights, on sexual reproductive health, and gender-based violence. We wanted a platform to voice our need. For instance, the blind, Women with visual disability had their platform. Women with physical disability had their platform. Intellectual disability, their parents formed a platform, but we had none. It is the same for the other women in the world. Kenyan Women Union advocating for women's rights, but nobody talking about people with disability, more so women with disability. We had nothing, we were just hanging. We felt as the wearer of the shoe, we know where it pinches. So we formed Fedwin to help us address our issues the best way we know how to and the best way we can. There's an endless list, but I can probably highlight a few success stories. We had a case study of a deaf uh, married lady somewhere in Central. It so happened that this lady was violated by her husband. She has been struggling the previous years, but somehow managed to purchase two plots of land. One, she built the house and lived with the husband. But the husband married another woman and kept her on the second plot of land, which the first wife had acquired. So she remained silent since she did not have the capacity to advocate for her right. She had her own business uh, in the retail tailoring and selling uh, clothing like uniforms. Later on, the husband with the second wife wanted the first plot as it was liquidated within the town. This plot had rental houses. And one night, the husband came and burnt them all down with the aim of kicking his first wife out of her land. After the incident, the first wife and her children went to report to the police, accompanied by the husband in the role of the interpreter. The husband is not deaf, he hears, he came to interpret. The abuser comes in as an interpreter. The statement was taken down with the help of the husband. The children shied away because they saw the father had taken over. But the daughter left to come and look for us to report. When I arrived at the police station, I found the written statement, which was not the first time. This had happened many times. An abuse occurs, the statement is written. An abuse occurs again, the statement is written with the husband accompanying the wife. I decided to step in and take over the case, clearly explaining to the police that the statement needed to be written afresh. When I saw the reluctance, I reported the same to the police in charge who accepted the amendment. The case was to proceed to court, and we also advocated for the need to have an unbiased interpreter. Luckily, the case was a success. The husband was found guilty and arrested and ordered to leave the deaf lady and never to bother her again. Currently, she's doing really well. Her business is thriving. Everything is well. She lives peacefully. And I felt that is indeed a success story. The second success story, a deaf young lady, it just so happened that she was raped, which resulted in her being pregnant. When the mother saw her daughter pregnant, she felt it was a nuisance. The case was never reported. Why? Because of the communication barrier. Fedwin was unaware at that time until the girl became pregnant, and by that time the evidence was lost. The family said they had feared to report the matter because of threats. They could not report. What we understand is the social perception of the deaf as useless, unimportant. Why should they report? So the family did nothing. After the girl gave birth, 
the mother communicated with the doctor that her daughter should be sterilized after the birth of the baby. The mother felt that the daughter should be sterilized. She felt that the baby will be a burden that she did not want. So the elder sister informed us of this and we actioned promptly to meet the mother, but her mind was made up saying she doesn't want the responsibilities of all these children. She has brought one and will keep adding more. We informed her that it wasn't her daughter's choice. It was accidental and at the same time, remember the deaf girl has a right. If you castrate her in future, she'll marry and how will she have children? She's above 18 years old and you cannot make that decision on her behalf. She has a right. If you do that, I will go to court and sue both you and the doctor if you sterilize her. I then connected with the nurse who was working at the same hospital and a friend of mine and explained the situation and urged her to ensure nothing happens to this deaf girl after she gives birth. And I said that if it does, I will sue them. So the nurse was surprised and picked the matter up to help me and the girl was not castrated. The girl is now married and has children. She is happy. Can you imagine if she was sterilized? Then what? Fedwin Frame is to be a strong organization, sustainable, having its own revenue, not dependent on donors, having an office. This is my dream. Truly, when an organization is sustainable, it can achieve many things. When dependent on a donor, there are fluctuations. That is my dream for Fedwin. Also, to be well known, both locally and internationally, having various partners, not only for the donors, but also exchange of ideas. That is my dream. We live in different, different countries. Some countries are advanced, others are behind. Some to advocate for accessibility is easier. For others, they have challenges. I wish that we could have a young deaf women world, maybe association, in a way, in a way where there can be exchange of ideas, communication with one another, share challenges here and there, to enable us to learn from each other. Learn how to do this where one is successful, give out the information, then as a deaf youth, I can implement in our country. That is my wish. We have the World Federation of the Deaf. Likewise, my wish is to have World Federation of Young Deaf Girls to aid them to interact with each other, exchange ideas, learn from one another, support one another in whichever way possible that will enable them to drive their lives forward and their rights and ideas to be achieved. Mothers of deaf children, I'd like to tell you, this is my plea. An important key thing is for you to learn sign language. Within the 47 counties, we have venues where the deaf teach basic sign language. Or you can communicate with the deaf school and the deaf can interact with one another. Even if you visit the county social services office, they are aware of these deaf groups. You can get a deaf community where you can learn sign language. Why the insistence? Imagine as a mother, you have two or three children. You speak to one and the other one. How do you think they feel? How do they feel? When you communicate, they can express themselves, reducing their emotions as they feel part of the family. No matter the age, we need to be made to feel part of the family. 
Maybe the child will tell you they need a book, you buy it. The other one wants to say the same thing, but cannot. During Christmas, maybe this one will like this type of clothing, you purchase it. And because you did it for this one, you want to do for the other one, but maybe that's not their choice. Another thing, in my work on gender-based violence, many deaf children abusers are adults. They are adults. They are abused because they cannot express themselves. And the abusers know this. They are targeted because they will not tell. Why? Because they cannot communicate. But if you have a bond, understand one another, the child can share with you the problem. As a parent, you can be able to save a situation before things become worse. Most of these problems arise from a person close to them, who knows them, not someone from somewhere. It's always people around. Mothers, fathers, please. Take the opportunity to learn sign language. It's not long, just about two to three months. And it's not daily, about two to three times in a week. And if you want, Fedwin can help you to learn that. Secondly, as Fedwin, we have provisions for counseling parents who feel stressed, maybe having children that they feel are problematic, we counsel both the parents and the child to help them to bond. If maybe your child has a problem, it could be abuse or being rude, Fedwin can assist. Some parents look for school fees for their children and we can advise you where you can get it. Currently, we do not support with school fees, but we advise on that. Some parents have given birth to deaf children who do not know which deaf school they can take them to but we can connect them to the nearest school. How assessments are conducted, we advise them on the methods for the child to attend the school. At home, uh, some mothers complain that their child is silenced, that they do not talk, but a one-on-one -on -one session at home, we can help them feel free to bond and engage with the parents.